We have made some excellent progress, but it's time to finally finish this thing, starting with the Wither Skeleton. Should be an easy one to start things off with. We actually already have an outpost at a fortress here, and we even have a rail all the way back to our collection. It didn't take long for a couple of them to spawn, and we're going down the tube, and it would have been that easy if only I had made the jump back over. No, 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 no. So there's a slime block at the bottom so the withers won't die, and somehow they don't actually hit you mid-air while they're falling. Um, and I had some ender pearls on me, so that let me conveniently escape. All right, I go through the top one, and he goes through the bottom one. And now he's just a button pressed away from our collection. Next up was Blaze, and with everything already set up, it should be pretty easy. The biggest concern is half of the blocks in my nether tunnels are wood, um, and it would be ideal if they didn't all burn down. So I placed nether rack to protect some of the wood where, where I would need to get out and push him into the portal, but between that and not traveling directly behind them, I think we'll be alright. And it's nice that we even have a spawner for this one. Don't fly up, please don't fly up. We're gonna need a roof over this, aren't we? Oh, okay, that works. I think I'm just gonna have to break this and hopefully he doesn't fly up. Everything was going well on the move back until I realized I didn't connect my temporary track that I had laid to get him to our collection. Um, so I had to improvise quick and then uh, get him the rest of the way. And I even went in a circle looking for the button on this. It is a miracle that he didn't burn the tree down. But we were not out of the woods yet, as the base he comes out of is literally in the woods, and everything around us is flammable once again. Uh, but it ended up being smooth sailing. In a previous episode, I got skeletons and zombies to wear every piece of armor in the game, and this included mob heads. And at the time, mob heads weren't out yet, but were planned to be, uh, so this is as good a time as any to fill in the spot that we left. We actually already have a system in place that works perfect for getting piglin heads. Usually I use this for withers, but we can just drop a couple piglins in there. And just like that, we had a couple piglin heads. Just like before, we can turn our mob farm on, divert them to a specific area, and then throw them the items until a zombie and skeleton pick them up. Then we transport them over here, and it's easy peasy. Or at least it could have been. I struggled for a second, but eventually got them in place. And then I went back to the nether, because it was time to get zoglins. That's when I realized that the blaze did actually hit something. So let's check the footage here. Yeah, that'll do it. If this was the only damage though, this thing was a success. And for some reason there's like a whole school of these guys here. So the thing about Zoglins is they only spawn in the Crimson Forest and we don't have a railroad track there. So I could build the tunnel there, um, or I could go to the overworld and bring them out, or I could just build like a quick bridge. And it's about 500 blocks, so I went with the bridge. The thing about the overworld is that would make it 4,000 blocks, and I have a history of needing to get multiple mobs over again. Uh, so if anything bad happens, it would be great to have a permanent path in place to try again. Before I knew it, I was carrying two guys back. Unfortunately, I lost both of them. So one fell in lava, and the other uh, I didn't use a name tag on. I thought because you could breed them that they wouldn't despawn. So I replaced them with babies, and they were easier to move anyway. Back at our island, I can switch the nether portal they come out of by turning this on. You can see how often I use this. So instead of coming out of the minecart track, they'll come out down here, and then we can just have them chase us into place. So my waddle's memory is trash because I thought we could breed them in the overworld. Not only was that wrong, but this is a one-way ticket, uh, so they don't become de-zombified if they go back through the portal. So if we want to farm again, uh, we'll have to get more. But other than that though, it went great. So next we need a piglin. Unfortunately, they become zombified when they go into the overworld. Uh, so how are we going to do this? And we do technically already have them collected for our bartering farm. Uh, but for our overworld collection, I have this idea. They can wear armor, so... Aha! You will now look normal in the overworld. Let's actually look at him from below. Okay, so... 
I actually think I'm going to grab one with a crossbow instead. Uh, the golden sword just kind of makes him look like a pig, pigman. So I think I found the most obnoxious mob in the game to try to get to follow you. This guy is so annoying. Come on. Before people click away from the video. Come on. And you know, after getting him in there, I think it would look better if there were more. And yeah, this looks way better with three. Skeleton horses are another one that I took breaks from getting. Not only are they not able to go through portals, so we have to get them to spawn on our island. So everything I thought about phantoms being annoying to move, these guys are way worse. Uh, which is the perfect time to tell you. I'm a tiny YouTuber, and I still read and think about every comment on the video. So go ahead, reply. And I definitely will read it, and I probably will respond as well. And I could not get him to go up the ramp, so eventually I just got him here, uh, which was a problem because uh, the ramp is where his cage is, which is where I want him to be. I tested it on a super flat world, and we can actually safely use a bubble column to get him up, uh, so we're just going to try to do that instead. You know, it's funny, so I finally get him in here, and the first thing I think is we can probably turn him into a stray. Uh, we did that for the spider jockey, and so I, I would bet we can do that for him as well. Um, and so that means that we'll need two, uh, which means we'll probably need a better spot for him to be as well. Uh, so luckily for us, there was another one that I already had named. Alright, got him in here, so it's time for him to become a stray. And I only have one powdered snow block, so if he could not move for the next minute, that would be great. That is sick. Okay, so next I thought it would be awesome if we took their helmets off. So helmets on mobs take damage from the sun, so if we just let the sun hit it for a while, it will eventually break, and if we hit him with anti-fire potions, he will survive. I'm so dumb, why did I stray him first? Now I'm getting all the slowness arrows. Okay, so he was my backup, now he's a feature, so it would be really awesome if he didn't die. Uh, also, half the stuff on my world uses thunderstorms, uh, so... I really need him to survive so I can use thunderstorms for other things. Okay, so this looks bad, but he's not actually burning. The animation plays, but he doesn't actually take any damage. Uh, but at the time, that didn't stop me from panicking and throwing an extra fire resistance potion on him. Now, just to get him into his cage, which is below us, uh, we'll use a slow falling potion. Okay, so this is where he's going. And then the other one will go right across from us here. So it will all be very symmetrical, very beautiful. And we're just in the same area between the armored mobs, uh, which we completed earlier, and the chicken jockeys. Check it out, check it out. We finally have these guys. This was so long in the making, like multiple months, but we have them and they're in their spots and they're looking awesome. I also just noticed that we are down a skeleton. We lost a skeleton, guys. So I think water got into his cage and he drowned. Um, I was clearing space around here and we are under the ocean, so I think that's what happened. Uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm not for sure. The one bright side is Halloween is just around the corner and we can, we can make this right. Okay, so I got this slime a while ago, uh, actually during our skeleton duel machine, um, and now we just have to move him. So I did have to widen some portals for him to get through, not to body shame anyone, Mr. Slime. But being able to ride minecarts, uh, this should be pretty simple. Should have been simple. I accidentally suffocated him while trying to get him in the minecart. Uh, we should be fine though, we're in a swamp, it's not like these things are rare. Look at these guys, for some reason every mob and their mom is out. Uh, but I see a large slime, and I think the best course of action is just to name him and come back in the daytime. And actually, there's a slightly closer one over here. Um, we'll just have to clear the creepers first, and preferably not shoot the slime. And I guess my tunnel, at least by the stairs anyway, uh, wasn't tall enough. And after our, our minecart fiasco, I think I'm just going to have him chase me. I don't, I don't need to risk suffocating him again. 
All right, got him with the end around. Basically ran through a hole on the other side and then came back to this side quick. And boy, is it awesome having both the magma and regular one now. Unfortunately, I destroyed my main silverfish spawner a while ago, and I'm sure there's still a ton in here, uh, and, and we'll only need a couple. I remember breaking it too. It's like the only spawner I've ever broken on this world. I was thinking to myself, I'm, I plan on doing crazy stuff on this world, but no matter how crazy, I'll never do anything with silverfish. Oh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, so we'll be doing Endermites next, um, and I think it will be easier just to let this one despawn instead of fish him out. Alright, so this is the easiest mob in the game, so I had to save him for last. Awesome. 